is the air disc container worth it? In our home, we hardly use ours. In fact, I had to go into our storage area and dig it out. I didn't even know where it was. All that said, the air disc container is really cool especially if you eat dairy and even if you don't. So today we're gonna show you a few things that it can do, the air disc container and our top three non-dairy uses for the air disc container. But first, here's Shalva explaining to our four-year-old how the air disc container works. See, there's no sharp blade. It basically pushes air, like pumps air around into it. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna like break up the lemons and break up the strawberries and make it like cold and sweet and delicious. Um, and then it's done. Like we don't have to strain it or do anything to it. Like it just comes out of here and we get to drink it. Oh, yeah, fully. Totally. Right? And that's actually the origin story of how the air disc container came to be. There was a, a mixologist in the Cleveland area, I think, that needed a way to make three or four mojitos in a flash but not sacrifice any of the, the flavors, the extraction of, of the oils in the, the citrus, a seamless experience that a, a mixologist would approve of, but fast. And that's how it works. The air disc container muddles the ingredients. Using the ice and the disc, the ingredients are muddled and oils are infused, the, the herbs are muddled, and the drink is chilled all without watering it down. The, the ice doesn't get crushed, it just kind of moves around. Michelle from the Culinary Center said it best. And then the ice also kind of helps beat up the, um, the lime a little bit. Everything kind of gets beat up uh, instead of pulverized and liquefied like a standard Vitamix container. Look at that, is that beautiful? It's really nice. How's that for a great holiday drink? So everyone can see what it did to the lime. You see how it just like took all that flavor out of that lime? It just beat it up, but yet it left it all intact. So it allows you to get a really great pomegranate cosmopolitan. And then Vitamix realized, what if this could be more than just a commercial beverage maker? Could it be more than just a muddling machine? Chalk it up to clever marketing or engineering or experimentation, but the answer was yes. This thing can do some really cool stuff, especially with dairy and eggs. So aside from muddling, whipping, fresh whipped cream with stiff peaks in seconds. What also makes it cool is you can add fresh berries and it will add obviously like flavor bursts to the whipped cream, but a unique consistency that you wouldn't get from a standard container. There's like little sort of almost like, I wanna say like confetti of, of fruit in, in the whipped cream. So you have muddling, you have whipping, it can emulsify. So a hollandaise sauce without using a whisk, can the air disc container do a better job of emulsifying than a standard Vitamix container? It's hard to say, we haven't tested it. I'd say it's fair to say that it's not gonna do a worse job. And if anything, it would do a better job, more sort of it's more similar to what a whisk does by adding air instead of just purely like chopping it or like slicing through it with a blade and finally the fourth use for the air disc container is checks notes oh foams hot or cold foams so take skim milk and we'll talk about this in one second it can actually do uh, plant-based milk pretty well uh, to make foams hot or cold foams for cocktails and uh, specialty coffee drinks. And of course the container is uh, consumer friendly, so it's BPA free, it's dishwasher safe, and it's compatible with all the Vitamix machines out there. So an Ascent or Legacy machines, it works with all of them. But what if you're dairy free? What if you're whole food plant-based? Is the air disc container worth it then? Hey, use our links. Hey, use our links. Lifeisnoyoke.com forward slash links. Prior to a few days ago, we would have said, no, we just use it for batch cocktails. But we put it to the test with a few more things. Here's what we made. First of all, we made the under the radar, but incredibly delicious and like nothing we've ever had come out of a Vitamix machine, strawberry lemonade. What makes it incredibly awesome? Let me show you. First of all, it's absurdly easy. One lemon, three strawberries, and some honey. If you're plant-based, you can substitute with another sweetener. So few ingredients and so little of each. <laughs> Usually with blender recipes, it calls for like a zillion strawberries. And then, easiest way, 
pound of berries. Okay. Frozen. Frozen it's strawberries. Right in there. This used three. If you're making it at home, the strawberry lemonade recipe is one and a half cups of cold water, one lemon or lime if you want to make strawberry limeade, with the ends trimmed and discarded, and the remainder cut into four equal slices between a quarter and half an inch thick. Basically, you're making wheels, and this is the perfect shape to extract all the juice and the oils most efficiently. Three strawberries hauled and quartered, two tablespoons honey or whatever sweetener you like, and two cups of ice cubes. Well done. So you put everything in in the order listed and increase the speed to the highest setting and run for 30 to 45 seconds. We like to use the top as a strainer, so to pour it right away, leaving the ice and the, the lemon rinds inside. It lasts pretty long. You can put it in the fridge and if you want, you can serve it over ice too to make it extra, extra cold. More love for the strawberry lemonade. This recipe is awesome. And finally, finally, I've never had anything like this come out of a blender. The best way to describe it is this is like a hand muddled cocktail, which makes sense. This, you know, the air disc container is a, it's a batch cocktail maker. I mean, if you watch it kind of pour and you can, I mean, you can kind of see through it and it's definitely not a smoothie. It's definitely not juice. It's, it's amazing. I'm gonna run out of B-roll to cover all this praise I have for the strawberry lemonade. But it's ice cold and it's bursting with flavors and it's it's sweet but not too sweet. Kids like it, you can always add sweetness and it works really well if you wanna make it an adult beverage. We took it on a walk and made it a walk tail. For the strawberry lemonade, for all the other types of lemonade you can make. Like lavender, blueberry lemonade. The air disc container may be worth it. The next thing we made was aquafaba fluff. And I need to provide some background here on aquafaba. Bean water, it's literally the water from a can of cooked chickpeas. And it's used for plant-based cooking as a, uh, in place of an egg white, basically, as a, as a binder. It's in our beloved pancake recipe, oatmeal pancakes made with aquafaba. So aquafaba fluff is kind of like a plant-based cream. You take three quarters cup aquafaba, one quarter cup powdered sugar, quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar, and you slowly ramp to variable speed seven if you have an Ascent or a G series, and variable speed five if you have a C series, like a 5200, and you let that run for one minute. Quick side note about the, the noise output of the air disc container, how loud it is. The air disc itself, it's surprisingly quiet and it makes sense. There isn't a lot of ingredients getting thrown against the sides of the container. They're not getting sort of punched and pulverized by a blade. There's less friction. It's just, it's, it's pretty quiet with one exception. It almost sounded like an airplane was taking off. Not necessarily loud, but you, The peaks will get stiffer if you wait. The, the top gets harder because of the cream of tartar, and then the kind of heavier liquid falls to the bottom, so you scoop it off like a can of coconut milk. But to be clear, this is not vegan whipped cream, plant-based whipped cream. Like what you would get at a store in a, in a, in a aerosol can which is basically identical to whipped cream. It's a very different consistency, and because it uses cream of tartar, it tastes like cream of tartar. It tastes bad. It tastes bad. Yeah. You like the taste of that fluff stuff? Mm-mm. No, it's weird. We like healthy food, and we like plant-based food. But we're too much of foodies for this one. So yeah, that one didn't make our top three uses for the air disc container, dairy free recipes, but... Uh rely on you dependent on your clicky click independent contractors we self-insure in case we're safe but the next two did beginning with cold foam cappuccino so cold foam cappuccino is espresso with cold foam on top cold espresso and the reason you use cold foam is so you're not having warm foam heat up the cold espresso it's a cold summer drink fancy 
cold sunken drink. Anyway, we knew that the, the air disc container could make cold foam with cold skim milk, but could it get the same results with dairy-free milks? In the past, we've tried almond milk, store-bought cashew milk, oat milk, whatever. We heard that Ripple brand, and maybe that's not that important, but pea protein milk, milk foams great. And it did. Now, to be clear, Shalva still imbibes in dairy out of our house, and she worked as a barista in high school. So she's very particular when it comes to uh, fancy coffee drinks, and she knows what they should be. This is the foam. Big bubbles. Okay. Which is not what you want on a... No? Mm -mm. Do you want little bubbles? Yeah, you want dense bubbles. It'll do. Interesting. In a, in a pinch, but you want a dense foam. Like this should be up to here right now. Okay. With three scoops. Like it's basically just milk with bubbles in it. If you did this with skim milk, the container would be up to here. But I loved it. You get this ice cold coffee coming through these foamy bubbles. It's a cool experience. The best way to describe it is that it was just really fun. Fun to drink. Life changing use case, no, but more of a must try if you know when when you have one of these things and finally we went back to old faithful we made a batch cocktail the third type of batch cocktail we've made in the air disc container the first being mojitos the second being a pomegranate cosmopolitan with michelle at headquarters and now mint julep mint juleps you take half a cup of bourbon we used an inexpensive brand to save and it kind of reminded us of like, Duffy. Well, it does smell like college. <laughs> college. Half a cup of cold water, like, half a cup of sugar. Like so much sugar. 20 mint leaves and four cups of ice. All dad ice. <laughs> Top on. 30 seconds on variable speed five in the air disc. If you want, you can garnish with mint. Of course, it's a batch cocktail. This thing is made to do this. It was super good, super fun, and super easy. Guys, one mistake to avoid with your Airdress container, uh, actually with mint julep, is <laughs> drink them right away. It tastes so good. In the fridge the next day, the mint juleps taste like toothpaste. And guys, thanks so much for supporting our work. Really appreciate it. Lifeisnoyoke.com.